All right, so we, we have audio recording going, so we'll have a record of the meeting, okay? And it appears to be here since we can, so I suggest we just begin. Okay, so I would like to call to, uh, to order uh, the meeting of the Concord Middle School Building Committee of September 19, 2019. We have, a, we have a fairly full agenda today, so I would... Uh, I would uh, encourage everyone to uh, be attentive and uh, in the discussions to be uh, succinct, but uh, uh, but don't don't feel free to join in, but be succinct because we have a number of things to get through. We will we will go through. Uh, we have a backlog of minutes that we want to improve, and uh, we'll do that first. Uh, then we will be going over uh, discussion of the schedule in our. Uh, in our subcommittee meeting uh, with the design group, we talked about the schedule, and it's a very important thing, and we want to uh, we want to address that. Uh, uh, so that'll be the first item on the agenda. The second, we will we'll revisit after both the design and the sustainability subcommittees have met. Uh, we now uh, are very close to a finished version of the RFS, so we're going to spend some time on that, okay? And the goal there is to get that approved, so we'll be able to post that soon, okay? Uh, after that, we will begin the discussion of uh, Project Charter, which is, as we discussed the last time, it's a goal-setting process uh, for the in the entire project, okay? And that's, that's not, as you can imagine, that's not a one-session thing. We'll begin this process. Uh, and then it'll continue, uh, it'll continue. Um, and then we've received some correspondence and new business. I want to make sure uh, we're working now with Hill to uh, produce the agendas. In, in, all of our, in all of our agendas, there should be a, uh, an item for public comment, okay, at the mm -hmm. end. And we want to make sure that Thank that you, is on all of the yeah. agendas. Uh, we will have that today. Okay, there will be a, there will be a section for public comment at the end. Okay, and we intend to adjourn uh, at or about nine o'clock. So we'll have to we'll have to be focused to get, get to get through our work. So with that, I would like to move to the uh, approval of minutes. There are minutes from the seven eleven school committee meeting. That these all have been distributed to members, and, and hopefully. Uh, people have had a chance to to look at them. There was a uh, subcommittee on 8619. I believe that was design. Uh, 8819 was a school uh, full committee meeting. 814 was a subcommittee meeting. I believe that was a finance committee. Uh, 15 was a school building committee. Those are OPM subcommittees. Oh, no, 29. I, the, uh, 814 was probably uh, the design. 829 is the Finance Committee, and 85 is the School Building Committee. Now these are, uh, there are quorums for all of the subcommittees here, as well as the main meeting. So I would entertain a motion, a general motion to approve all these sets of minutes. Is there a second? Any, are there any comments uh, related to any, I know this is difficult, but we want to get caught up and uh, uh, get current with the minutes so from here on we can approve them on a kind of regular basis, okay? So are there any comments related to any of this? Just a point of order, help me out. Are we approving only those uh, minutes for meetings that uh, we attended? Yes. Okay. okay. So yeah, you, when, when, whenever you, whenever you vote on minutes, you should only vote on that, those minutes if you, if you had attended, so. Uh, so uh, if there are no comments, I would ask for a vote. Uh, I would ask for everyone to, uh, to approve those minutes in which the meetings that they attended. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, thank you. I appreciate that. I know that's a bit cumbersome and we'll do it. We'll be more timely with the, with the meetings. We had a lot of stuff going on in the beginning. Okay. And now we can get them on the web page, which lets them be public, which is important. <laughs> okay, uh, the first item uh, on the agenda is uh, a discussion of the schedule. And uh, Mike, you want to? You wanna, uh, yes, I'm going to pull that up here. Everybody should also have a copy of it in your package. 
So, uh, so we had a discussion, um, I think in the first meeting we had here, we had thrown out a date of uh, a school opening fall of 2023. And we heard some, some, some discussions about that and had some discussions afterwards. That is there an opportunity to better that date? So from that perspective, we started looking at uh, a high level of that. Um, so I've got two uh, scenarios here. One is the current schedule, and one is the fast track schedule. The current schedule is pretty much in line with the schedule that you got last time. The one difference you'll see that the end dates have pushed out a little bit. Uh, that's because we added the 45 days between town meeting and getting the town vote, which we didn't have in there initially. That's pushing this day out to October. We understand if we were to go this route, we would be pulling that back, probably trying to get that date back to July, if you will. So uh, I don't want people to get alarmed about that, but what we try to do is we actually have the, everything plugged into Microsoft Project, which is a scheduling tool that we use. And we, we tie everything out so that one activity leads to the next to the next, and that's where we've gotten this. So th this information you're seeing has a lot of backup behind it, basically. So I just want to let everybody understand that. So um, this information, uh, just running through the current schedule really quickly here, we're looking to uh, hopefully get the designer RFP signed off today with that understanding that we could do that today. That will lead us to, to working with the designer over the next uh, couple of months here and getting a contract signed in the middle of November. Um, with that understood, um, based off of the information we've received today, we're looking to go to uh, we were looking to go to a, a town vote in November of next year. So we basically gave ourselves from when the contract was signed until a point forty five days before that, so that we could get the feasibility and schematic design done. Uh, we have the town meeting, the town vote, and then securing the financing, which would allow us to then get into design development and construction documents. Uh, we have fifteen month time period there. And then we had the construction of the building for 18 months. And, and again, that gets us to opening the school here, which is a little bit late. Uh, we, we've got to pull that back, obviously. And, and ideally, our recommendation is you never want to be finishing construction even in August. You want to do it in June or July. Gives us a chance to get the punch list done, work out the bugs, allows us ample time to get move-in done, IT work, and all that kind of stuff. So um, in this scenario, we might be shortening up, for example, the, the design documents by 15 months down to say 13 and a half or something like that. We might show up in the construction from 18 to 17, things like that. So this is assuming right now, um, I'll say for the lack of uh, detail, a design bid build process. So chapter 149 versus a 149A. And the reason why I say that is if you go to 149A, there's opportunities to have early packages and different things and then the design documents and the construction over, can overlap more. So again, that's something we should evaluate down the line, which, which option is best for the, for the town for this project specifically. But right now, without having that detail, we, we assumed kind of, I'll say a worst case scenario here to, to make the schedule show that this is the, the, you know, the worst that we would be and we can work our way better. So um, that's pretty much how that schedule was developed and just how I kind of talked it through there. Before I go on to the next one, is there any questions or comments on, on that? So the really the, the key dates in there are when the when the design has to be completed, right? Which is that that's exactly right. The key dates are when the, the first part of the design needs to complete. And just so we understand, the RFP we're putting out right now is for this first section, and right. we'd only be contracting for that first section. Uh, just like with Hill, you're only contracting us basically through that September time period. So that's um, that that and, and then that schedule is that's that's September. That's September. That's September. So that's, uh, just remember that when we start to talk about the accelerated schedule. Yeah. So um, one of the discussion points we had, so if everybody's good with that, I'll, I'll start to talk a little bit about the fast track process here now. So um, with the current schedule process, we started with the day date and we, we moved ourselves forward and, and, and saw where we ended up with the understanding that we were trying to tie the town meeting to November. That was the goal as part of that. With the fast track schedule, what we heard is we want to be in September of 2022, not 2023. So we start with that date and we try and work our way back and we make adjustments and we see kind of where things end up. Um, as part of that, we talked internally specifically about this 10 and a half month duration uh, to get the first part of the design done. 
this 15 month duration to get the remainder of the design done, and then the 18 months for construction. And we had a discussion, are those the right durations or is there something we can do to shorten those? We actually talked with Don and a few of the other people here that have some experience with the design. We talked with some of the other designers we've worked with. And what we, we come up with an alternate plan which we think is aggressive, but is doable, is reasonable, and, and, and something that we could work with. So from that perspective, what we're saying here is, with the understanding that Concord has already done a lot of the feasibility part of this, this first section, just I, I have initials here. This is feasibility study and schematic design. So with the understanding that a lot of the feasibility has already been done, for example, it doesn't seem like we're gonna be going back to look at the ad letter option, or look at alternative sites. Seems like we know where we're going, we know we're going with a new building. That saves some time from the designer's perspective. So with that <coughs> understanding, we feel that we can do a, a, a proper uh, reduced feasibility and a schematic design within five and a half months. So the, the one thing with that, that that is key is we as a committee are gonna have to make timely decisions and, and allow the designer to keep moving forward with minimal delays. Um, what that would allow us to do is that would allow us uh, mid-June to have the design done, an estimate done, and have a package that we could submit um, for, for a town meeting. So uh, this would this option here, this scenario, would be looking to do a town meeting in June. Then after that, 45 days after that, we'd be looking for a town vote, which is the end of July, and then the funding to be available pretty much beginning of August. What that allows us to do then is start this, the CD and DD. So DD is the design development, and CD is construction document. So it's the design development is we, we've got a plan, a, a general plan, now we're getting the details in there. And then we get from the details to even more details and coordination between trades that the architectural does, which always sink the plumber does that type of thing. So that's where we're getting with the construction documents. And what we're saying here is seven months there. Um, there is one option, one part of this that if, if the town was willing to take on that risk, ideally we'd like to allow the designer to continue designing after 5 1 and not stop for a month and a half or two months here. So ideally, we would allow the designer to continue into DD at this point once we've gotten approval from this committee. And what that does is this seven month duration actually becomes nine months then. Mm -hmm. uh, it gives it a little bit more time. So between seven and nine months, and then, then we do the construction documents. We, we've left the construction duration at 18. Uh, we just think we're too early in the process right now to shorten that up anymore right now. It doesn't mean down the line we can't this step, especially if we were gonna consider 149A with the CNN risk, with potential early packages and things of that nature. Um, I would say typically a new building kind of on a, in an area of a site that you can isolate tends to lend itself to 149, but a fast track option might push you more towards 149A. Again, maybe a discussion for another day, but just want to kind of you know frame frame the discussion here. So with that 18 months, that basically shows us getting in on August 21st. So that would be substantially complete. Uh, about five minutes ago, I said that's not ideal. So um, what we would try and do in this scenario, I, I mentioned the seven months, maybe it's nine months, maybe what we're doing is we're allowing them to continue design here and we shorten that seven month duration to, to six and a half or something like that to get us in at least you know the beginning, beginning of August. It's really tough to say we're gonna open, we're gonna be finished with construction on the 22nd and a week later we're gonna have all the IT, all the furniture, all the bugs worked out, all the teachers moved and everything and, and just have you know the, the kitchen up and running, all that stuff. So I think we have to work on trying to pull that out. So um, kind of laid out the two options there. So they're, so they're really, yeah. One of the very significant aspects of that is the amount of design time, right? Which right. moves from, and, and that's, this is the major part of shortening it, it moves from mm -hmm. nine months to five months or something, is that? That's right, so what we're showing here is this 10 month duration goes down to about five and a half, and, and I, I think 10 and a half, or 10 and a quarter months is a little more than you need there, but that was again, we were linking that to a town meeting in November. I think one option we may, if we were not to do the fast track and we were to do this, one of the discussions might be, is the town meeting in November and the vote in December, or is the town meeting sometime earlier and the vote is mm -hmm. in November? So that would actually help pull this, this date back. But 
Uh, so I think the 10 is, is, is maybe a little much here. The five and a half is certainly pretty aggressive. Um, the 15 months here, again, maybe a little heavy, um, not unreasonable, not uncommon. Uh, the seven, which is really maybe eight or nine, again, reasonably aggressive, but um, something that we can do. One of the benefits that uh, Concord has in not being in the MSBA process is that at, at the end of DD, we, with the MSBA, you submit a package and then you need to get their response back. We're still gonna get that package to you, but we can get a response back from your committee much faster than we would in the MSBA process. It just, so that, that, this probably would not be an option if we were, if the MSBA was part of the project. Okay, yes, yeah, thank you. That, yeah. We're, we're, there are, everyone is thinking of many implications of this and we'll, we'll get to that discussion in a minute. The, the big top line issue is why are we doing this? Number one, okay, and, and the idea is to move that end date back okay to get into the school earlier and reduce the amount of time that it takes because that as uh as i think you all are aware the construction costs are rising so rapidly okay that six to seven percent a year now if you move that back you're not going to save six to seven percent but you're going to save some significant part of that okay in terms of bidding and 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 procuring materials earlier in the in the services that's that's the significant reason we're trying to do that. And I, make, I want to make it clear that there are implications for schedule in the town and the votes and all that. That has very little to do with why we're considering this process. We're considering it because it has the potential to get us in the school earlier and to reduce the costs. Okay, so that's, that's why we're, 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 we're trying to, we're having this discussion to do that. And the reason that we're having it today is one of the elements uh, of putting this into the RFS is that we're, we'll, have partner, we'll have partners in this schedule, two important partners. We'll have the designer and we'll have the construction uh, uh, company. And, uh, and all of these dates we can write on, the, uh, write on any schedule we want, but it's going to be determined on whether the designer can do their work in the time frame and the builder can do their work in the time frame. So those are both out there. But this gives us a potential opportunity to move things forward. So with that, I think I want to get people's reaction to uh, the potential of moving toward a more aggressive schedule. If I can say one more thing, just to dovetail with exactly what you were saying. Um, one of the reasons why we're asking about this today is with the RFP, we need the designer that is going to submit on this to understand are we looking for them to do feasibility and schematic in 10 months or in, in five and a half months. Mm -hmm. we, we can actually put the rest of these dates from here down as to be determined. So whether we pick this option or that option, if we pick the fast track, for example, we want them to understand that they need to do this level of effort in five and a half months. And they need to structure their team in such a way that there's sufficient staffing that they can do it. It's not going to be one person for 12 months. It might be two people for six months, that type of thing. And I, I, the other one yeah. little thing I wanted to mention from what you said, because I just want to make the record, uh, if we were to accelerate uh, the drawings and take the risk, that's not just the decision of this committee. That has to have town approval. Okay, if because that will most probably involve additional budget and risk relating to that, so that that would be both the town and, and the, to the finance committee and and the town and this committee. Okay. I just ask a quick question back to um, the overlap you were talking about. Yes. I just couldn't see which direction you were pointing when you said so, so it sorry. takes that seven months to nine. They're starting earlier or continuing it later? So the, 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 the straight up the way this is shown right now is. The design development would be done, or the schematic design, sorry, would be done on May 1st. Right. Okay. And then basically the, the designer would, would go into hiatus. Okay. The okay. entire time that the town, the 45 mm -hmm. days waiting for the town meeting, right. 45 days waiting for the vote, and then the, the, the week to get the financing in place, get the contract re executed. Right. And then on uh, July 7th, uh, 31st, okay. that's, that's they're starting back up. So right. what I'm saying is uh, <coughs> a lot of times, even with an MSBA project, uh, towns will allocate a certain additional amount of money to allow that designer to move forward after May 1st. So on May 2nd, they're really starting that design development, the DD process. They're not waiting that, that two month period. So that's what you're that's what talking about. Thank you. Okay. For perspective, I've done it both ways as a okay. designer. I've had towns that are 
willing to take a risk and cross their fingers that it will pass and they kept us moving for the sake of the schedule and then sometimes we go into hiatus literally try to you know work on other projects or help out on other projects for a couple months until until, until the boat. I'm on one right now. I delivered one last right. Wednesday, <laughs> and I'm on pause yeah, until, until then, yeah. November. So, <laughs> but others on that will problem. say, "Let's keep going." And basically, the risk you take is kind of the, those hours that you put in, yeah, until the uh, the vote happens. And yeah, it doesn't because go if through, it doesn't go right. through, then the designer has continued to work. And, right, exactly. You know. Okay. Thank exactly. you. That's fair. Totally clarifying. So you're 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 risking spending more money on the designer, but you're betting that you'll be able to save money on the escalation cost. Well, and you're not and spending can. more on the designer. It's only that. Well, you might be spending money that that you don't. Right. You don't you're risking money. that if the if it, if the eventual vote doesn't pass, <coughs> right. You've right. spent some money that you then have mm. that, that then doesn't. Do <coughs> it doesn't do any good. But if you if you win, then. You, you win the, the, the escalation. Points. The time. You get the time. <laughs> well, the time you get in school a little bit. And, and just so you know, what we're talking about, again, is stopping at the end of SD. At the end of SD, if we were to put this in the RFP right now with the fast track schedule, you're not risking anything at that point. You haven't committed that you're trying to allow them to continue after that day. You're only signing a contract up to this day. So there's no risk with that. The only risk or the only um, you know, red flag there is we want the designer to be under clear that this stage is going to be done in five and a half months and they've just got to plan accordingly. Again, they've got to staff up basically. So that there's no risk. The risk would be from that point here, if if you were to choose this route and then sometime by December or January of this year, you'd have to decide whether you're going to to do the vote in this time frame or if you're going to slide the vote out a little bit. And that's, that's when you would start. I have another question. Um, in, in other projects that we've done in town and projects that you've done, Bob, um, when you start to introduce the, the net, net zero elements and um, trying to sort of figure out the sustainability piece, does that take longer? Is, I'm just wondering, because I think that's going to be something that's going to be a big part of this project. I know. I'm only answering because you <laughs> yeah. specifically asked me my experience. Uh, no, as long as it's an integrated process that you get from the beginning. The hardest part is making the decisions, but it doesn't take any longer to assess options. In my experience, the part that's harder to control is the ability for the committee to come together and, and say, yep, this is the direction we want to, this is the system we want to use, this is the, you know, the, um, whatever it is related to sustainability. The decision making is typically what takes longer because people want to digest all the information and understand it. Because it, you can't just make decisions in isolation, really. It's really, there's a lot that goes into the decisions regarding sustainability in the building itself, frankly. So. Yeah, I, I would add that, that similar at cost as well. I mean, if we make a clear decision about the direction we want to go early, then it doesn't affect the schedule, no, and it also will cost a lot. Thank you. Um, as we as we think about this, I you know there's uh, this is fast. Okay, this is not there's no sugar coating this. This is this is significantly less time for the design. Uh, so they're t both the designer and this group of people. Okay, we'll feel this. It's not. It's not like it's a. You know. Oh, okay, that's easy. Let's just go do that. This is a. This is a significant change. So, I don't. If we, if we entertain this, I don't want there. I want people to be confident that we can put the same quality attention uh, uh, to the project, such that the outcome is what we want it to be. Okay, that's 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 the big issue for me. There's reward in this. There's there's significant reward in this, but there are also we are making a commitment as a group and with our partner, that the designer, that we're going to be able to do it in this time frame to the to the standards 
uh, and quality that we want. So it's not a, it's not a trivial decision. Uh, I want people to feel like we can do that. And we have talked. I, Dawn has given the benefit of her experience in terms of doing this many, many times, and and, and our partners, uh, OPMs, have, have have taken it to the highest level in their company and gotten a reaction that said it is doable. Uh, particularly if the case is we don't have to we don't have to have the what is sometimes cumbersome review of the MSBA. However, that review has to be replaced by our own review, okay, in terms of all of those things. So this committee has to work, uh, work very quickly but efficiently in, in doing that. So I, I just put that out there. We don't want to risk quality. Uh, yes, I have a question. Um, in your experience, does an accelerated schedule like this have any effect on the, the quality of the applicant pool? Responding to this request, um, people are I, busy. I think everybody's busy, and I think that's why you need to be upfront and, and let them know what it is. Um, I don't think it's going to have a substantial effect on. So it won't knock out firms that are. I, I can't say it won't knock out. I, I'm going to say I don't think that this is that aggressive that it would knock us out. You know, I, looking at it from our perspective. Talking with other other designers, uh, I, I talked with a couple of designers I've worked with. We've talked mm -hmm. talk with them. Um, we don't feel that this is, uh, I'll say, aggressive to a point that it would be detrimental. Okay. It's definitely aggressive, and meaning you know it's faster than a typical MSBA project. And um, uh, Mike mentioned that we need to make decisions and move forward, not rehash. You know, make a decision and then we need to be. Um, you know, very clear in our decisions and, and make them efficiently as the designer needs them. Uh, but but the design time is not going to hit somebody as it, saying, hey, It may, but if it were to, I would argue they would be too busy to meet the other schedule okay. also. Okay. Right? So I think that's a fair way of saying if they're too busy to say, hey, we can't do it by next spring, honestly, they may not be able to do it by the end of next summer either. <laughs> so. <coughs> I don't know. That's that's my take on it. If you know, if I were assessing this as a designer. So this is basically a more aggressive schedule than you know, your typical process in MSBA, but it's not. You're saying it's not unreasonable <laughs> or unheard. Of. I think it's more aggressive, but I think the other caveat there is that an MSBA process would have a full feasibility section. Right. If we were doing a full feasibility and a full schematic, five and a half months would be different. Would, it would be, be very different. Right. right. But the fact that we're, we're doing very abbreviated feasibility to validate what was already done and then moving forward into the schematic, I think that is what that gives is us the opportunity to do this. It's also worth noting during feasibility and schematic design, you have three deliverable, deliverables to the MSBA. You have two in feasibility, PSR, PDP and PSR, and then you have SD. So there are three points at which you're waiting for feedback from the, from the MSBA. You're delivering something, you're waiting for their response, and then you're re replying and moving on. So there is a process three times that we're we're committed to sort of following, but not committed to having to wait for that wait whole. For someone else's answer. Yes, and board meetings, etc. Right. So I don't want. I don't, I'm not asking for this now, but is there a way to kind of monetize what the savings might be, what the what the financial impact is, of one one way or another? I'm not asking for an answer, but is there a way to, to do that? There is a way to do it. I, I think the, the parts that would con, you know, contribute to that is the escalation, the you know, the just the general fees uh, of, of of an OPM of a contract and things of that nature that would extend out. Um, you, you also have the maintenance costs of those two buildings that you're you're not doing preventative maintenance for an entire year. Um, there's other things like busing is going to get less because you're only going to one facility rather than two. There, you know, staffing. staffing. There's a lot of things that go into that. That you 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 gotta have one kitchen rather than two. It doesn't mean you're gonna cut staff in half, but you 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 gotta adjust staff. Yeah, we don't and, uh, Janitorial staffs and, and all that stuff. So all that would be something that would contribute to that overall savings. Right. May also, I? I'm sorry, the moment cost or. Go ahead. Um, well, it, and I'm good about that. No, I'm going to move you to the kids in a minute. I, <laughs> Go ahead. I guess we're going along the same line. I was just going to say, I've heard Larry talk multiple times mm -hmm. about the value, the educational value yeah. 
I'm moving in earlier, and she can say it so much more eloquently than me that I was going to say, could you explain that to everyone? Yeah, I mean, we've got multiple sets of issues, and Justin should chime in at any point just in how we're operating right now. Um, limitations all over the place. And frankly, the other part that makes me nervous, which is kids, but it's also highly about infrastructure. We never know what's going to fail in those two buildings. So there's always a lot of risk there. We've scrapped together so far, but there's always a potential of some major infrastructure going down and then we're relocating kids. And so that always is in the back of our heads. And the longer we take to build, the longer that'll be. But um, instructionally, we're very limited. Space-wise, we're limited. We're struggling right now with a few of our options as we put 7th and 8th in Sanborn because that's really tight, but it was still worth doing. But, you know, we yesterday are looking at each other going, we just, we're, we're just locked in, completely locked in, and that's affecting kids directly every single day about the limitations. Um, I do have to say, we, I've had conversations with a couple of you about if there's any middle ground to those two options. And... The, the talk of whether a mid-year move is up for an option. I would have said no a few weeks ago, and I've moved a bit just because if you're going to give me choices between those two, but tell me there's a middle, we might consider it. We did do it at the high school, and I wasn't here for that, but we pulled off an April vacation move from the old building to the new one. Um, so I think that's a piece of the discussion, too, to just know that, you know, maybe you could do a... a a winter break move in there if that became a realistic time frame versus the other being too aggressive. So um, it's not ideal, but I think Justin and I would say in terms of the kids and the staff, we'd almost rather deal with a mid-year move than wait another year. So I don't want to rush it to the point of being a Wishing we hadn't, though. So yeah. it's that was all those big pictures. Professionally, pictures. that was my instinct when I saw the two schedules. I said, what about Lori? Would you consider? Yeah, that was the call I got, Don. <laughs> <laughs> the realistic person in me said, maybe there's something in between these. Yeah. We have very aggressive and we have um, somewhat, you know, less aggressive. And in my mind, I could, find, I could yeah. see that a scenario mm -hmm. down the middle. And that does get affected by town meeting and votes yep. and when in the year yep. that happens and also yep. when you want to go out to bid, you know, there are times that are better than others. And the upside of, and I know it's disruptive to doing mid-year moves, the upside is not, not every other school that's moving mm -hmm. is considering a mid-year move. A lot of schools move in August. So that means all the movers are poked up, all the furniture people are strung out, all the architects and contractors are are knee deep in July and August yeah. and trying to get things done. And you benefit from doing it, you know, finishing up over the winter and um, considering that. So there are upsides. To started to allude to, to town issues. I want Stephen to be able to, uh, there are implications for the town and decision making. And well, I, my comment was gonna be on the height okay, of the designer. And I think from a strategic standpoint, the committee just needs to ask itself, um, what happens if it fails? What does what, what, what <coughs> the committee do act if it fails at the ballot, hypothetically speaking? And if the answer is bring it back to the voters again, sharpen the message, sharpen the design, then I think that you commit to continuing design work between the oh, interesting. between the delivery of S D and the town meeting. You continue design A because you'd be on the floor of town meeting with even better information. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, because if it's a thing, if it's one and done, then you wouldn't spend money on design. But if, if the commitment is to get the project done and go back to voters at a, at a different at a different day with, I guess, a better message or maybe a revised design or something like that, <laughs> I would suggest that you probably decide uh, early on mm -hmm. that you would commit to the designer that work will continue in those. Mm -hmm. There would be no hiatus. And, that's just the food you're buying. Mm -hmm. oh, so you're addressing the money that you're still, I mean, the only thing is, if you, if you go to, from a strategic standpoint, if, yeah. you, mm -hmm. if the design goal is let's design the ideal building and it fails, and then you have to go back and redesign the building to be something more cost effective, um, then maybe you wouldn't, and you would take the hiatus because then some of the design features that were developed during that period may not be a part of you'd have to be out. Um, but if it's, let's just get, a, get the building that you know, is the most efficient, <coughs> yeah. then you could keep going. Uh, just 
I think I've heard all that. That's fair com uh, That's one part. Interesting. That's yeah. a, that is one part of this. There are other, you know, there are other things in in what we're suggesting here that move things forward. But I, I think that's well taken in terms of that decision related to continuing the design in the interim. Yeah. So can I just add from the perspective of the students again? Um, I think it's somewhat normalized, especially those who support the education at Concord Middle School. We have, we have six classrooms outside. And because we've been doing that quietly now for you know eight, ten years, it just seems a normal part of the education at Concord Middle School. That's not normal. Um, and you know, the parents we had over five hundred parents in the San Juan building yesterday. And you know, they were commenting on just the state of the condition of the building. It looks beautiful. The investment made by school committee um, has been exceptional and the building really um, looks great. So I had parents in the beginning of, they followed their child's schedule yesterday saying, you know, wow, this building looks great. You know, I'm beginning to doubt whether or not you need a new building. Then they, they followed their child's schedule, you know, and they were called to go to a science class from this side of the building, walk through the entire building, go outside to the outside classrooms. You know, usually a classroom mod drops in like your last couple of years of a building um, process like this. And where we've had six classrooms, it doesn't matter what configuration we're in, we need those six classrooms outside. So from a safety standpoint, I have kids going outside all the time. It's essentially an open campus for 11 and 12 year olds. Um, and I just wanted to add that perspective as well from the perspective of the students. I will echo that as one of the parents who followed a schedule last night that I consider myself relatively efficient and able to follow a schedule and I was late for four out of my eight classes and missed the first you know minute or two of the teacher's um, the overview of what was going on. So I would guess that that tends to happen with kids as well, but trickling into their classroom over the, the first few minutes of class which is disruptive to everybody. So. Just, just a little um, yep. color to add to that picture. You know, if I have a student who needs to go to the bathroom during one of the six <laughs> classrooms that are outside, um, the student needs to bring a door swipe when they leave the classroom mod. If they forget it, the classroom mod is locked behind them, and the side door is to get into the building to go to the bathroom is also locked. So they're knocking on the door, they get a door mm -hmm. swipe, they go into the building, the closest bathroom to all my outside classrooms, um, goodness, I'm not good at feet, Hundred. but you know, yeah. it's, yeah, it's, it's a good, probably good long four or five minute walk yeah. to get to a bathroom, um, to do the business and then go back. <laughs> you think about an interruption in the learning, um, it's significant. Because again, another detail, <clears throat> excuse me, does our community know? There are no bathrooms out there in our classrooms, in our outdoor classrooms. Um, you know, so it's, it's those details too that I think it's the job of all of us to make sure that we know the impact that is mm -hmm. on the students. Mm -hmm. That's why we're all here. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I, I think, I, I, my guess is that everyone here would concur. Yeah, we need to replace that. Okay. Everyone here would concur. It would be good to be good to reduce the cost by getting it earlier. Okay. And that right now, are we? confident that we can do that and and you know we're not this isn't the end all we will we will put in a schedule in the rfs we'll get a lot of feedback through that process we'll have a partner then on board in a couple of months and this will come into sharper focus as we work with them in terms of hopefully this or something very close to it but we'll gain more on that but right now our decision is the schedule that we put into the rfs that we're all behind and we're going to work toward, uh, and is, is 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 this a reasonable thing to put in there? Yes. I think we'll all hold our breath about uh, what could happen to those facilities in the way of uh, some catastrophic event mm -hmm. with roofs or plumbing or anything else. Nonetheless, uh, so far, what I'm hearing with these two schedules is a very fine argument for an intermediate schedule. Um, Having personally lived through the high school mid-year move, I can say it's very, very doable. <clears throat> we worked with the firm and posed the question, how is this humanly possible to do this in a week? The answer was, 
if we can do it with hospitals and do it with nursing homes, we can do it with the CC HS. <laughs> and in fact, they did. Um, so uh, to Lori's point, uh, I think it is very, very doable. I'm not worried about the kids' resilience for that movie. But the I, you know, I don't minimize it. I was on the high school building committee, and we were, we were hopeful, but we weren't sure what was going to happen, and we were, we were, we were significantly impressed, impressed yeah. with how well it went. And yeah. I don't minimize what moving in the middle. You know, there's a lot yeah. of work and a lot of, particularly for the teachers, and, yeah. you know, in terms of getting everything up and running and moving. But we were, we were, we were pretty pleased with how that happened with the high school. Yeah, we're sort of talking about the same thing on a one to two week move in with a fast track schedule. I mean, the two weeks is more than one week, but but if, if we did it in one week at the high school, then, then that doesn't scare me so much to be trying to move in in one week in mm -hmm. if we both had. Mm -hmm. I would also say just, sorry, um, just a quick comment. Big, big picture, not particular to the move or any of these little pieces here is, I'm going to go back to what Mike said about that. Really what we're committing to right now is that it's the first two line items here, right? It's the feasibility and design. Um, and that the rest is, is our vision. And, and really all of this, I guess my point is all of this is a vision. And I think when we're talking RFS, we're looking for a firm who's going to be able to come in and say, okay, we can see that as our vision also. And I think we would all go in knowing that if something happens in the middle that makes us feel like, whoa, this is too fast, we need to put the brakes on, something's happened, whatever it may be, we could adjust. Yeah. But you can't adjust the other way. We're never gonna go in and say, oh, look, look at this, we're gonna go you know, three months faster and get in earlier. The only way to have a chance of saving that money, getting the kids out of the old building before something bad happens, is to target an earlier date. And I think we all will have to use that judgment and responsibility that we have along the way to keep doing the reality check and saying, is this still realistic? Are we good? Okay, we're good, keep, keep going forward. Or to hold on, not making sense, and, and we make a change at that point. But I, I feel pretty strongly that if we don't at least put out in an RFS the possibility that we're, we're thinking this might be our timing, then that then we at least have that option versus cutting it out from now. Yeah. It, um, it's also worth noting, we could include the fast track schedule and put as an objective or something that the designer needs to show us is the ability to either meet the schedule or their best you know, proposal to get us close to, right? So that could be an objective or a criteria that we evaluate them by, is to say, we recognize this is an aggressive schedule, we're hopeful, show us what you're capable of doing. That then can become part of their proposal and their presentation if they make it to an interview. And that way they're showcasing and we're able to have that discussion before we negotiate a contract. So just food for thought, like this doesn't bind us to something, it tells them what we're trying to do if we include the fast track schedule, but then as an objective or a criteria, say, we realize this is, <laughs> this is fast, we're hopeful, but, but showcase to us what you're capable of helping us achieve, oh, and then we can, stupid. that starts the discussion, so that's a possibility. I like that. You move, you move from aspiration to this is what the schedule is, okay, and I view, uh, the job of this committee and particularly the leadership of the committee to to execute what we say we're doing on time and on budget okay and if you're the only one who's going to we're the only ones going to do that right. when it, when they say no we can't do it your question is why not and how can we okay and that that's and it gets harder it, it get the schedule and the budget get harder as you go through this and there's a point where you've got to say this is it and this is what we're going to make anyway but, but that's it. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, b b briefly, I, we, yeah. we have we'll have comment period after, and I'll allow one. You want? This is related to the schedule. Uh, just can can you clarify um, obligations to meeting deadlines? Uh, so I know that right now we're talking about the RFS, uh, but eventually that becomes a contract. So if this committee doesn't meet these time targets, is is there repercussions if there's a contract with the designer and the designer can't meet this schedule? Is, is there going to be cost overruns uh, 
for for parts of this taking longer uh, in the end. It, it's more about you know. Yeah, that, there's a lot of parts to that. There's a there's a contract and what the contract says, and there's a relationship and when the schedule is set and what the commitments are. So I, it's it's very hard to answer that question right now. Uh, I the goal is to, there not to be cost overruns and there to be congruity with the designer in terms of the goals. Okay, and then the contract has to reinforce that. Any other? Well, uh, I, I yeah. guess the, I mean to me the the fast track is very aggressive. Um, I guess I'd be nervous about a, a late, late August plan completion. I, I'm wondering, the, to the point you're raising, Mike, of you're looking, you're trying to issue the RFS right now. We really just need to to provide those first two line items. Can, can we focus on that? Five and a half seems very tight to me. Um, can, but for the purposes of this RFS, can we, can we borrow that time from the, the deliberation of the town? and put in the RFS for now seven months for FS and SD, and then not include any of the dates so uh, within the RFS? I, I think our, our thought was that we would literally just put the, the, the first two lines in, the dates in the first two lines. <laughs> Everything else would be TBD. I like Don's idea of maybe throwing it back to the designer and say, we filled in TBD on these. You tell me what your dates would be. Mm -hmm. um, they're going to do that anyway, yeah. to be honest right. with you. They're going to put together a project schedule. That's what project managers do. They're going to make sure they can make meet, right? Yeah. So um, they may put it together and be like, whoa, we can't do this. But here's what we can do, which I think is. And just one second. We're up and running now, right? Yeah. Um, television. I just want to say to the people who are watching this, we apologize for the first part of this meeting. There was some confusion relating to the TV bearing in a different place. At, uh, where we were, and we got them over here as quick as we could and got the television up and running. I just want to make sure that the people watching this show uh, understand that. So to your second question about the seven months, um, I think uh, Heather said it correct before. If we want to go with the fast track, we can always adjust to the middle or to the, to the, to the standard. If we go with the middle, we can always adjust the standard. We can't ever go back to the fast track. If we go with the standard, you, you can't really, once you've started down that path, we can always take more time and slow it down a little bit. But it's very difficult and very expensive to try and start accelerating the other way. You know, just like when you make a decision early on to go net zero, and you give that mm -hmm. direction, it's clear that that's the way we're going. We're not reviewing other options, so you, you, you've got a clear focus. So I think uh, my recommendation is whatever the committee decides is the right decision, but just understand that if you go with the fast track, you're still giving yourself more options. If you go with the, the current schedule, you're you're kind of going down that path. We're going with the mid option. Again, we have some options there. But getting the fast track wouldn't be one of them. We we could just be limiting ourselves on teams may not fit who think they can't beat the fast track. Mm -hmm. That would be the downfall there. Right. I guess what I, to me the decision point is are you, is the committee is the school district okay with the mid-year move? We are. And if, that, if, if you're okay with mid-year move, then the schedule, instead of backing a schedule out of an August movement date, now you can put together a schedule that makes sense for design mm -hmm. and, and document preparation. Because if you move in December or February, it really doesn't make that much difference in the grand scheme of things. Um, I mean, Stuff could, like, to, to that gentleman's question, you develop a schedule on what you know, on, on what is known, schedule yeah. develop, and then in the middle of it, when your electrical, your electrical sub goes bankrupt, and you lose, you know, 30 days, of the, I mean, stuff right. happens from time to time, and right. you have a schedule that has no, you know, tolerance for stuff happening, you, you add a lot of stress to the mm -hmm. project, and if it's, if you're really fixated on, Opening day move being in for opening day, you know it can change the certain sort of dynamic of the project. But if we're saying a mid-year move is okay, then I think you can kind of breathe a little on the schedule. And, and but I think that's a, I mean, like I said, the committee needs to make a decision. The decision is, are we okay with the mid-year move? If so let's you know kind of nail, you know, memorialize that some way, and then have the schedule fall out from that decision. As an alternative. 
in my suggestion, based on <laughs> following up with what Stephen's saying, is we could put the less aggressive into the RFS and then say, we're considering a more aggressive schedule. Please show us an option or, or multiple options to have us, you know, move in somewhere between fall of 22 and fall of 23 and let them kind of give us their, so, you know, they're still presenting something to us, but we're being less aggressive in our, in our tactic and asking them to put forward something they're comfortable with. Right. So by I mean, less aggressive, you're talking about maybe seven moves? Seven. Uh, well, I'm saying, I don't know if you include the <laughs> left-hand side in the RFS, but again, as a criteria saying we're, you know, we are hopeful maybe this, mm. this process can be shortened or, you know, right. please show us an option that allows us to be able yeah. to do that. Yeah. Yeah. I like that. Yeah. that point, so if you have that as a ranking criteria, mm -hmm. okay, in a design mm -hmm. firm, Tells you we can mm -hmm. get there faster. Mm -hmm. Then there's a layer of accountability. Oh, right. They don't need to deal with their right. own schedule that they propose. Right. Mm -hmm. We've yeah. done that preemptively. Been like, whoa, their schedule is really loose. Like we can save them money and and propose something at an interview that is actually gets them there quicker. Yeah. Okay. So that's that's another way to do it. Mm -hmm. So that so to summarize that, that perhaps we use the first schedule, but put into the RFP in some fashion that it would be a goal to accelerate this if we can, mm -hmm. and we're interested in your thoughts on that. Mm -hmm. Both at feasibility and SD, but then also at the construction, you know, so recognize, because they'll put together a whole project schedule, not just to get us to end up schematic, they'll look at the whole thing. So in that, we should just say, as part of this, and we'll talk about that before we negotiate the contract, but then also <laughs> recognizing the implication on the full project. And the point of that, we think, picking about that is that will, <coughs> elicit more possibilities. Mm -hmm. People won't be intimidated <coughs> by a five month schedule. Right? Yeah. And sure. if the best they can do is what what we have on the left, then if everyone comes in and says that's the best we can do, then sure. that's the best we can do. Right. Well, well you may also find that you want somebody who isn't so flexible on the schedule and that you trade that off against the schedule. So mm -hmm. I mean, there's that too. Just exactly. semantics on this, I was about to suggest something similar in terms of choices. Mm -hmm. uh, my personal recommendation would be to lean it more towards, here's our, as opposed to leading with the long schedule, mm -hmm. lead with, with a more aggressive one. Here's our aspiration, mm -hmm. but we know that might be tight. You know, we're looking at a range from fast track to middle of the road schedule. What, you know, what do you think? And, and kind of throw it out that way. So, yeah, that was so my original bit, suggestion. But, so you could look at it either way. But you know, do you do you at least put out their first your aspiration and then say, but we'd like feedback and we we, we which, know and, and see what you Having listened to that last part, what's your? I think I, I I see the merits of both options. I think uh, my gut is if you give them the longer schedule, they're not going to fight it. hard enough to get you back to yeah. what you want. Uh, maybe yeah, they might not. I think if you, if you show the fast track schedule again, if we're only showing the first two lines, and maybe we, we, we have some sort of verbiage in that TBD and everything else, mm -hmm. you know, this schedule is currently set up to attempt to get in, mm -hmm. uh, get school opened in the fall of 2022. Mm -hmm. However, a winter 2022 movement is, is, is an option, you know, and ask them kind of what are their thoughts on that, how, you know, how realistic is that? Like, that way they, you're yeah. actually, asking them to give you a, a, a detailed answer. You can hold them to their answer down the line, but also if everybody's saying fall is realistic, this committee should feel better that fall is realistic. Mm -hmm. If everybody's saying, you know, winter, or if, you know, six out of eight are saying winter, even if you end up picking the guy who said the fall, you might still want to shoot the winter. Right. <laughs> you know? Uh, yeah. I like that. that. Yeah, I, I tend to lean toward that scenario there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think uh, just to, Put it in, put it in blank. Like let, let the, the proposers set the schedule, but have like I said, a ranking criteria. You mm -hmm. know, be the efficiency of the schedule, and it, it might say, <coughs> he just has to set as one of his project goals. When does it want to be in the school? And if it's by the end of 2023, you know, calendar year 2023, or if it's for the beginning of school, whatever that date is, and like I said, let them back those schedule and give points for a more aggressive timeline. Do we are we comfortable with that? I mean, we're, we're, we we have another issue that we have to talk about. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so in short, it's current with an incentive toward 
acceleration. Uh, no, I heard it more the way Mike said it, which the was the opposite. Right. It's which the, is the fast the, track with a, uh, but what do you think? <laughs> so no incentive baked into the ranking. For well, I think what I heard yes. it would be to suggest the first two items of the fast track with TBD everywhere else, and then let them know that our intent right now is to try and meet a fall of 22 opening, but that it, we want to be clear that we're open to a winter 20. I wouldn't even bring that up. Well, I, the only reason why I, I would is because I'll, I'll give you an example. The reason why you have those two options is that I didn't think a, a, a winter opening was an option for school. You know, a lot of school departments are opposed to that. And without sitting down with this committee and understanding what you're willing or will, not willing to do, I didn't want to put that as an option. So I, I think it's important to allow the designers to have that understanding that, hey, if you can't meet, you know, August 15th, you know, August 16th doesn't push it to the next August. August, maybe it pushes it to December. Mm -hmm. And so I think that's why we do that. And then the other part of it, I think we haven't gotten to the score sheet yet, but I think uh, it's a great idea that we have a, a category in there for acceleration and it, it might be a 15 point category that, you know, really, you know, contributes to that, that somebody who's just gonna take it easy and say, yeah, you know, I need three years, maybe isn't the right, you know, company for you. So I think that- Wait, Are we all comfortable with that? Scenario, yes. okay. Mm -hmm. I, you know, I thought this took a long time, but I think this is right at the core of what we've got to do. Okay, That's in terms of what we're Yes, it was. Yeah, yeah. Yes. So, thank you. Okay, can we, if we can move on to the document itself, the RFS, where this is uh, both, as I mentioned before, both the sustainability uh, subcommittee and the design subcommittee have met and have sort of extended discussions and uh, we have, there's a document in front of us. So we want to uh, have Mike lead us through this, this pile is yours. through any areas where there might be <laughs> a need for further discussion. Let's we get going. Ready to go? Mike, can I ask a question before we get started? Is the goal to still submit this this afternoon for um, so, publication next week? The goal here is if we can get a uh, consensus that we can move forward uh, to keep on the time to we need to submit our um, notification to the central register today. If we submit it today by five o'clock today, it's in the central register next Wednesday. Yeah, I just so want to let every, I yeah. want to remind yeah. everyone that yeah. I thought that was our goal, yeah. but I wanted to confirm. So, so that's it. So we don't have to have the document, I'll say, finalized today. We have to know where we're going today so that by next Wednesday I have a final document so that it gets in the central register, it's advertised, we get people asking for it, we can deliver it. So that, that's really the goal here is that any edits that we need to make or anything like that, we just need to be able to do that. I, I'm still working with Stephen right now for the contract portion mm -hmm. as well. So that's another big part yep. that okay. we've got to finalize. Thank you. Okay, so let's get all right. Let's get to it. So um, we have gone through this with both the sustain, uh, Sustainability Committee and the Des Designer Selection Committee. Stop. We've made updates based off of that, and I believe those updates are distributed to everybody. So before I get into the details here, I just wanted to maybe kind of open the floor to, to questions, comments, that kind of, kind of thing, and then uh, that will kind of help lead us to what we need to focus on. Should we go to that section? I think one, one area that we wanted to uh, make sure that we have some time to, to talk about a little bit of uh, sustainability goals within the basket. Okay. Right, so at the design subcommittee meeting last Thursday, we included some language that we then had some follow up conversations about, and that maybe it was too loose or maybe it was too um, uh, non descriptive uh, in what we're trying to accomplish. So if you all remember the may and may not, uh, you weren't there, yeah. there was a lot of may and may not discussions. In because, there. yeah, because frankly, we don't have enough to we don't have enough information to make a final decision on where we're headed. We know where we want to go. So it's aspirational. And I think um, there was some talk about maybe changing that language. So with help from Matt, from the um, uh, sustainability subcommittee, which you haven't announced, but Matt's role on that, as well as Kate with the sustainability director role with the town, um, we were able to 
adjust the language a little bit and do you want me to read it? And so I've got copies of Kate's if you okay. want. Oh, so you just did. to oh, okay. summarize a little bit more, because half of you haven't been in this conversation yet mm -hmm. and half of us have been doing nothing but this conversation. So <laughs> we got to get a little synced up. Um, the sustainability subcommittee met last week, Charlie, Matt, myself, Jared was there. Kate was away, mm -hmm. so we looped her in yesterday. Um, and really did a, it was a really robust sustainability conversation and started to talk on what the aspirations were. Um, Matt and Charlie had to dumb it down for those of us who don't live and breathe that. So, I mean, that's part of the discussion, I think, is the information gap is pretty significant among the committee on who has what level of understanding. So we came up with a first draft there. The next day, last Thursday, the design subcommittee met and started to look at what the sustainability group had drafted, had another round of really robust discussions. Um, and my takeaway is all of us are going in the same direction. It's the how we get there, which is a very small piece of, you know, the RFP's got to set some level of what the goals are, but we haven't had the goal conversation yet. So we're sort of bouncing between process and demand at the moment. Um, so the goal today is to figure out what's going to go in the RFS to really outline the aggressive sustainable goals that this community is asking of us. And it's the discussion of what words are gonna do that while we find the balancing act between attracting the folks with the credentials to do that, but not overshooting to the point where it looks like we've made firm absolute decisions and goals without cost discussions and things like that, or overshooting where we reduce the pool of applicants who have the experience. And we've been, that's literally been the ongoing debate for the last week. Um, so last yesterday, when I got Kate in the loop after her honeymoon, um, <laughs> she ended up offline of all of this, offering up a different, slightly revised version of what's in your packet. So I have that. If we wanted to look at that, it seemed like in our little conversation, it might have started to hit the middle ground of what we might consider. So that would be my suggestion as I give you this, and we can hone in on what Let's Kate proposed. Yeah. Okay. Do you want me to read it out loud? Yeah, I've got it. Once you're in it, most of what we're looking at is on page four. Mm -hmm. yep. So I think what we would propose is essentially deleting what was previously stated from everywhere from on page four. This is the previous, this is the one that was in the packet that was already sitting there. From creating a design that is net zero energy ready down to um, the designer should report on and address embodied carbon. So it's basically that full section. There are one, two, hold on one second. They've got the marked up version, so I think they There's can six probably see it. Yeah. So essentially it's a replacement of that. But the language as proposed changes to creating a design for high performance school in alignment with the town sustainability goals, including but not limited to the following criteria. Additional specs to be outlined by committee in developing the project charter with the OPM and design firm. And those include net zero or net zero ready, all electric, energy efficient, meeting an energy use intensity, which is an EUI of 25 or less, minimizing and reporting on embodied carbon, minimizing or eliminating use of red list chemicals. And then the next bullet point would be conduct energy modeling throughout design and construction to ensure okay. follow design guidelines. To, to, is that cut off? For yeah, it looks reason? like I stopped okay. thinking there. <laughs> but I mean, energy modeling yeah. should happen yeah. throughout. Yeah. Um, that's I'm it may just be a period there. <laughs> okay. Right. Right. Instead, at the end of construction. Yeah. yeah. Okay. I, I I would suggest we can cut that line. I think it's going to get covered under. Yeah, UI. they're going to do it anyway. Yeah. Then. yeah. Lead or code or. Um, I don't know. I I don't think it's bad to have it in there. But uh, most designers are going to do that anyway. If they're a sustainability consultant. Uh, follow design guidelines for lead platinum or passive house certification. So that tells them we are basically looking for mm -hmm. one of the highest and, um, you know, 
criteria for a sustainable building. And that does not limit us in any way to go in one direction or another or no direction, kind of picking and choosing what we think is best for Concord in our, in our building. Yeah. And you know, maybe we choose that certifying it is more than we want because we've chosen you know, a, a mixture of uh, different criteria. So I think this is, this is identifying a very sustainable building in a way that doesn't limit us in any way. Yeah, and that, that was my goal, as I guess having the blessing and the curse of not being here um, for the week of the subcommittee meetings was looking at this fresh thinking, you know, I just wanted to kind of tie it all together and make it clear, similar to setting our ambitious timeline of like, this is what we really want in a building, right? And when we get into the discussions, we'll get into the nitty gritty of how we achieve that. But my thinking was, how do we attract design firm that's going to be understand that the town is really committed to sustainability it's a really important part of the project far from the only important part of the project and be excited about bidding on it and and helping us get to the most sustainable school that we can so that was kind of my thinking and in, in just trying to streamline this is what we're really hoping for and and so they can see that we really um, have high expectations of this building um, but still, like Don said, <coughs> give us the opportunity with the designer to get into the nitty gritty of what does that look like. Right. And as a designer, I would read this and say, wow, they're really passionate about sustainability. Like this is going to be a very sustainable building and, you know, we need to put the right team together to get them there. Mm -hmm. So. Other reactions? All right. Like, I think the only two, I had two comments. One was the, the question on the, the two insurer, which we already addressed. <laughs> the only other one, we, we did have a little bit of a discussion about the EUI, yeah. whether we say yeah, we less than 25 or we had kind of settled on 20 to 30. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. I'm, I'm okay with either one. I just. Uh, that's what I said yesterday when I saw yeah. this. I said, well, that's different than the design subcommittee. So those are, who were there for, mm -hmm. for that discussion, this takes the middle line or less of that. Um, it's yeah. aggressive, I'll be honest. Like, mm -hmm. um, but it's, it's not unattainable, so let's so try to get Matt, there. I, guess. I, I think that is uh, a very wise move to go with 25. I was quite bothered by the 30. Yeah. So <laughs> because 30, okay, you know, we can do things that aren't hard, mm -hmm. uh, but you know, doing things that are hard is, requires a little bit more. And if, if others are achieving those numbers, we should, we should push for it because it really puts a limiter. The higher EUI puts a huge limiter on what you can do with solar. From a from a net zero point of view, it kind of starts to box you out if you have you know using too much energy. So that would yeah. be point one. Well, points. I got a couple couple of points on this. The, okay. the, the second point is is on the the um, net zero or net zero energy ready. Uh, I wondered about the use of the word or. Uh, it seems to me that net zero net zero ready is really the design design process that really it really deals with orientation, the site, the use of the sun, um, the, the shape of the roof, um, the infrastructure that would be required to support that. It's an integral part of your design and so forth. Um, but we want the outcome to be a net zero building. So it's not an either or. Uh, I think it's... I was uh, just thinking of it as... I think it's both. I was thinking of it as either or is that we haven't we can decide if we want the design to include the solar aspect or not and that's the difference between ready and fully and zero well um, I, I just saw the we're unequivocal about the, the words all electric mm -hmm. we seem to be equivocal about the the net zero that, that's the way it comes across to me it likes well geez we're not sure mm -hmm. but all electric we seem to be a lot more confident then um, i want to make sure that the the actual amendment that the town produced I believe it says net zero ready, right? Correct. It did, but net zero ready doesn't imply that net net zero is. No, I, I totally state. understand that. I just want to. Yeah. I I think it behooves us to be clear about what the mandate that the town gave us. Okay, in this process, and we can certainly have aspirational goals to right. be net zero. I, I, <coughs> No, you want to? I, I guess my reaction, Charlie, when I read it, I read it like, like Kate does, where it's, it's, it's trying to teach out if we're really going. The, the, the decision about the solar is, is 
we're not totally committing to right now, but we want all the design elements that would make it so that would be uh, cheap. And, and I, I actually think that's where we are. I, I you know, I, I, I'm not, that's not saying I, that we, we want to have that discussion, certainly, and the financial and other implications of it, but I think that's, that more reflects where we are. Would you be advocating for, for just net zero then, Charlie? Well, I, you know, if you soften things up, you're just not going to get there. Um, you know, I think we ought to include as, you know, maybe this gets to the goals discussion. I don't it know. does, yeah. But, um, I, I think it's more important for the goals discussion. I, I, I want to remind everybody, this is not, this document is not where we're making all of the decisions related to sustainability. Okay. Yeah, I'm happy to wait for the goals discussion. Uh, I'm happy to do that. I just think it's important to kind of bring the group along. No, the reason this, I would like issue. to do it, to have it more focused there, is I want us to be collectively more informed about all these all these terms and yes, concepts right. before mm -hmm. we, we have that mm -hmm. debate. Yeah. And also, back to your EUI comment, I just want to quantify that. People use EUIs like they restrict the time of day that it, they're measuring it. For instance, a school might say 8 to 2.30 or whatever the school hours are, when in reality there's, there's a design EUI and my coworkers and I were just having this conversation yesterday because it came up at some MSBA interviews that I went to that I even brought up to Mike that you know, something, a project they're working on, they said the EUI was X, the designer in an interview said the EUI was Y, and they were significantly different, the so difference between 23 and 35. So you can imagine oh, wow. that I, I was scratching my head saying, how are they measuring this, mm -hmm. right? Kate is nodding emphatically. <laughs> so my coworkers and I were saying, why doesn't the MSBA dictate what should be included or what, you know, criteria around it? So as we have EUI discussions, and this will all come out as we talk further about this, but I just want to let everyone know that it's not truly, like, you have to understand what goes into that number. Well, and specific to yeah, King Open, yeah. I went back and looked after you brought right. it up the other day, it's advertised in some places as 27, not 19. Mm. I think, was it 19 you which, said? Which one? King Open, the one in Cambridge. Well, it's advertised as 25 is what I saw. Okay. But I, you know, I think, you know, I think your, your point is well taken, but I think there are definitional issues across the, the entire document across our entire process. And I think we need to address those through through our deliberation as a, as a team. We need to figure out what we're mm -hmm. talking about. Yeah. Mm -hmm. we, I think you've made the point, when we use these terms, what do we mean? Yeah. Yeah. And these things are defined uh, in various ways, net zero energy ready and net zero and net zero buildings and so forth, net zero energy buildings. There are lots of different ways of, of looking at this stuff. So. Um, and we're not going to be able to do that today. Not, you can't. <laughs> but I think, uh, so my point is, I'm fine with the EUI of 25. It's, it's a, aggressive in a good way, right? Achievable. Yeah, Achievable, aggressive. So I'm fine with that. And it's right in the middle of the room. So are we, yeah. I, as a group, are we, are we in agreement that this language is, is appropriate to put into the RFS? Yes. Good. It's good to okay. me. All right, let's I, move. So I'm sorry. I, I, I mean that. Maybe I shouldn't be bringing it up. You did add, Kate, which is great, the, the, the living building challenge of Red Less Chemicals, mm -hmm. which, which I think is good. So that, that's the bottom you know, sub bullet there. Um, I, I want to make sure that everyone's aware of what we're, what we're adding there when, mm -hmm. when we say that. So, because the alternative could be we could broaden into more something about um, high indoor air quality. Mm -hmm. um, just to make it a little more, I mean, it's a great line. Yeah, and I, I'm, I was just so. thinking about kind of trying to think about all the aspects of a sustainable building, and to me that means a healthy environment, indoor air quality, and so that was one that came to mind as a way to express to the designer right. that we're thinking about um, EUI, but also a lot of other aspects of, of the sustainability of the building, which includes the indoor air quality, so that was just one way to express that, but if there's another way to get that across. I was gonna ask, could you explain, <clears throat> sorry, read this chemicals a little mm -hmm. more and how that affects air quality and I guess what this issue is at a mm -hmm. uh, higher mm -hmm. level or lower level for the yeah. dump down folks. Matt level. can probably explain. So, so there's an organization kind of called the Living Building Challenge, similar to, to LEED, um, that has a issued a list of chemicals that uh, it seeks to 
to eliminate use of in construction materials, affectionately called the red list. Um, it's a pretty expansive list. I, I think, despite my aspirations for this goal, I, I, we're certainly not going to be going for red list free uh, in this project. I think that we could do this in targeted areas. Uh, like divisions 07 and 09, which, which deal with interior finishes, <coughs> thermal and moisture control uh, products. But I think that that's a discussion that we would that we would have with the design team. Uh, so we could put some more specific language here. But does it, does it minimize in some way? It it looks <laughs> at uh, reducing chemicals of concern, chemicals that have been identified to. Uh, cause carcinogens or be carcinogens or be endocrine disruptors um, and various other um, human health impacts, minimizing the use of those chemicals and right. products. That could, I, could I add just one quick comment on that? The, the, my understanding is that air quality, the, the, the biggest negative effect on air quality is the building materials. In new schools, it comes from building materials. So you can have a great, a great uh, 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 air circulation, air quality system. But if you've used materials that, you know, are not, you know, clean from this perspective, it's that's cool. where the pollution comes from, you know, in the in the air. It doesn't come from, you know, CO two, for example. It really it comes from it comes from the chemicals, and it doesn't really come from particulate matter either. It comes from these these chemicals. So, so that's so, this this would be seeking to reduce the load. I, I think what this. But it doesn't, what we aren't saying though, it's, it, it is two parts. It's controlling load and then it's also providing vent, fresh air ventilation. I mean, and we don't say anything about ventilation, so we could broaden it mm -hmm. to say something more about just providing uh, superior indoor air quality. Yeah, that's, uh, what, that's what my question would be. I mean, it seems like this is part of providing. It's part of it, correct. And Same if you thing. just say um, assuring good indoor air quality, mm -hmm. That would be a subset of that. I think that would be fine, yeah. And it would also include other things. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Is that a reason? That's a better way to say it. Yeah. yeah. Okay. You got that? Right. So, so we're going to leave minimizing or eliminating the <coughs> red list chemicals. We want a separate bullet. That's oh, I, I think that's what the replacement is. Replace that. Right? Yeah. Replace, replace it. So, what do you want to replace it with? Um. Superior indoor air quality. Uh, yeah. Seats in the delivery building that provides. Indoor air quality, which is still fine. So everybody encompasses everything. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, I, I'll just say why I got the floor. Uh, to Don's point about the EUI, I'll put my pitch in for passive house. So that's why I've, that's why I've been advocating for passive house because it it steers it it it, it solves all of the the issues around the EUI and the flexibility. So I know for the discussion. Uh, we will have a robust well, discussion about that. The, yeah. the other thing I would say, sorry, just quickly, um, the, the accelerated performance where this is, we haven't discussed this one yet, but below the strike throughs, I, I would broaden this one to also just say that we're, we're going to seek to maximize utility and government incentives. Mm -hmm. I mean, this is one specific program. There are, there are other ones out there, and I think we want to just say we want to take advantage of all of the incentives. That's good. That's good. Yeah. Yeah. So we could replace that with just a general seek to right. take advantage of government utility I, I rebate think so, programs. Yeah, utility and government program, incentive programs. So, yes. going back to the, the, the audience in this document is the designers. We're, we're actually having a hard time hearing you. Oh, sorry. Right. I, like, I, what we're trying to do is, is send a message to the designers that these things are important to us, and we want people who are innovative in these areas. And so my concern was this may have been a little bit too specific, and I think, but I think the comment about superior air quality may not be specific enough. Mm -hmm. And so what I would suggest is, um, like, sorry to do this to you, but uh, I, I think it needs to say something like, design that, um, you know, design that includes uh, building materials that, um, you know, have a positive and not a positive. Something, of, it has to say construction materials, focus on construction materials, because if you just say superior air quality, they may look at it as extra air handlers and an extra layer of filtration. Mm -hmm. That's what we're talking about. Mm -hmm. right. Again, you have that as a sub bullet then to the air quality. 
you know, I mean, we could say <coughs> that in both um, high performance ventilation and uh, load control, um, and uh, something about uh, considered product selection. Yeah. Or, or what something. if you even? I mean, those have are the two parts of it. Mm -hmm. So we can highlight. Mm -hmm. I, I think it's very important to even that we can highlight what, what we're viewing is the, the two major components of that are both the ventilation system mm -hmm. and uh, the product selection. Yeah. I mean, the concept. Of, so I mean, the reality is the, the stuff just sounds expensive, and I think as we get into it, you're going to want to have mm -hmm. some options to review and setting the, and, and try to. I, I I don't. Um, subscribe to the notion that once you put it here, you're locked in. And if you are, if you set the bar high, then you can't fall short of it. Or if you set the bar low, you can't go over it. It's the project's going to be a big accordion. It's going to be you're going to make decisions and uh, move the bar around as the project goes to meet cost projections, design challenges, whatever. There's going to be a lot of um, bear. It's going to be an organic process. And so I think it's more generalize like generalize a little more and just say this is really our goal this is really important to us and like i said we want something that's innovative and show us how innovative you are in these particular areas that, that's just my can i make so a suggestion on that language <laughs> can, I, can i make a suggestion for that sentence design a building with high quality indoor um uh, with high indoor air quality through use of sustainable materials selection and efficient mechanical system selection that way we're saying we're looking at it holistically. This isn't just about chemicals. It's not about just airflow. We want our students learning in an environment that has a really good indoor air quality. That sounds good. That work for you guys. Great. Great. Right. Can you send that to Hill? So <laughs> I feel bad with all the scribbling they're doing yeah, over there. I'll, I'll email this to you, Mike. Okay. Are we there were two other spots Kate highlighted that I just want to ask you to look at. One is in the selection criteria on page seven. I think you're going to like what she added, um, that part of the criteria is about experience designing high-performance buildings, and she gets a little more specific. Mm -hmm. So we should take any comments <coughs> there. And then there's one change to the front page, too. Mm -hmm. Last sentence on page 7. Last sentence, right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and the idea there was just making the criteria match up with our objectives. Yeah. Yeah, that's perfect. Which we have yeah. in our criteria yeah. for OPM selection. It covers too. the range of. <laughs> Any issues with that? Okay, the other one is. The very first page, there's a paragraph, third paragraph started with the town is in the process of, and Kate says, we aren't in the process of, we've done it. <laughs> so she eliminated that whole sentence. Mm -hmm. Okay. And the town sustainability goals are called out on page three. Um, so I think that's covered. Okay. Yeah. So that's where we are. I have one other comment not related to sustainability. The number of students is still highlighted, 760. Should we just say approximately and yes. then that, let that be a yes. topic of discussion? Yes. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yep. That's on page three, Mike. Sorry, the, the paragraph that was limited, is it kind of straight out? Yes. yes. And, and that, that 760, I think. No, that's not. On the first page, it's the grade Page one, Mike. The town is in the process of adopting a resolution. It is grayed out, but it's on page one. That so. whole, it's only a paragraph. I'm not even, it's only one sentence. Thank you. I think the 760 is fine. Because if you put approximate in front of it, that's the best information we have at yeah. the moment. Approximately so, 760. Yeah. It's reasonable. There's a little growth in there from our current numbers, and that's what we know today. So we have more work to do there for sure. Any other issues with the doctor? I have two questions. One, the walkthrough. Who's expected to go to that? Typically, I don't, if we don't need to discuss it now, it's just food for thought. It's October 3rd, is it? I was <coughs> Hold on. Yeah, yeah. I'm going off of memory, so thank you. Um, just, I'm not sure who's expected to go to that. And then what's not shown, talked about on here, and maybe it's a topic that we don't need to discuss today, but when the interviews will be, because I assume we're shortlisting to a minimum of three and then interviewing, so that's just, there are a lot of calendars that need to get coordinated, and that's not something we've talked about, so... So the, the walkthrough we would typically, I, I would say, ideally like to have the principal there and maybe the facilities manager. 
and anybody oh, yeah. else that's willing to come. Awesome. We'll, yeah. we'll, we'll have somebody there, probably be at there. least two or, or maybe all three of us there, depending on mm -hmm. you know, how many, uh, if we seem like we have a very large um, pool of people, which that's what we're hoping for. Okay. So As a really designer, the people I try to talk to are the superintendent and or principal. Right. Especially considering we're not really thinking a whole lot about reusing the building, so yeah, looking at the building is not really going to be their priority. Stand on the field and hear what we're brains. visioning, yeah. So yeah. I just want to throw that out there as far as who's going so that they can be available to designers. And does 2 o'clock work? We were trying to get it out, say, towards the end of school day. I think it was 3.30 on here. Do I have it It says 3.30 here, which would be better for traffic and all of that. Justin, that's fine? Yes. It's good because it wasn't a question. We can walk through and decide what we don't want to do. <laughs> All right. um, just looking at the other things we've highlighted, so um, we, we've had some discussions with Stephen in regards to the contract, and we're going to take the MSBA contract, uh, which means we have a three-part contract. They're going to be signing the initial contract for that first line that we're talking about, feasibility schematic. And then they potentially will have an addition to that later. That addition has two options. One at 149, another one at 149A. Mm -hmm. So we'll modify all three of those documents before next Wednesday. Um, Town Council is doing it right now, I think, or is in the process. It's in process. Yeah. Um, they said it will next week. So, so that, that's, that, that's going to be critical that when we, I mean, the, the other alternative here is we can always submit it as an addendum. You can say, you know, attachment B mm -hmm. to follow at a later date, and we you know, get time to submit that. So we, we, we can do it that way. Sure. Uh, so we're going to have three documents that are going to be based off the MSBA standard designer contract. Uh, town Council's reviewing it. We're going to take a look at their reviews to make sure that we're, you know, all in line and we'll have that ready to go. Um, 760 was one of the things we talked about. And then the milestone dates, I think one of the discussions we had is we're, we're probably going to change these to more generic. You know, mid November rather than November 18th. Mm -hmm. uh, the, the, the March and, 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 and May, uh, and based off the discussion we had today, we'll, we'll adjust that. We'll leave this as TBD, and then we may just have to work out some language. Um, I can pass that language by Lori and Don and Tim and, and Jared just to say hey, this is what we, you know, we we're talking about about challenging the challenging the designer to uh, specifically come up with their own schedule based off of this. So, so you know, when will we? See that? Um, I will say you'll see that this week. I'm hoping maybe as soon as today, definitely, but I, uh, I would say today, tomorrow is the goal. Uh, okay, so so we'll get an email that has a suggested final format yeah. of this. We'll, we'll, we'll make all these adjustments, everything, and what we'll do is uh, we'll accept all the previous changes, and then I'll do it as a document that tracks changes so that it will be very easy for you to see. And what I might suggest is that uh, each of us take a look at it, see if we have any issues, and see if we need to necessitate a conference call mm -hmm. or something. We may not. It, it may be fine. And then the last question I had, just uh, for more format. When they're submitting right now, we'd ask for 20 hard copies and three digital copies. Mm -hmm. uh, it's pretty extensive number of copies, but I believe that's consistent. Mm -hmm. with what you asked about as the OPM. So I think so. I thought we just had uh, 10. 5. I think I had 10. 10. 20 is fine. I mean, it's the design subcommittee, yeah. so we could trim it back a bit, but just knowing audience membership and things like that, 20 makes it easier because they're it's hard for us when we're scrambling if we're zipping copies up, so yeah. right. let's put that on them. Yeah. So we'll keep that there then. We'll keep that with that. Um, and... <coughs> Okay, so we're, yes. I just have one more question. Um, with the increase in feasibility study, there's a question on page three. Could you discuss how the feasibility study will be done? We, with the fast track, you may want it um, just offline to increase that so that the design of those that you're going to be left with the feasibility study. Any other RFS issues? Okay. I have a question on the scorecard. Right, we got to it. So the scorecard, the one thing I think we talked about um, <coughs> is I, I think we're going to add another category. Um, All right, one second. We're at, we're at 9 o'clock. Uh, I would 
ask if community indulgence if we go another maximum of 15 minutes okay uh, I'm not sure we're going to get to the charter but we get some other items That's right. yeah we will we will be done in 15 minutes okay so maybe it's under the understanding of this project is that's where we'll yes. add another category there uh, related to the, the uh, schedule that they're going to provide and, and then mm -hmm. mm -hmm. the schedule. Mm -hmm. and I would probably re make a recommendation hearing how important this is to everybody that that might be a, a, a an item that's scored between 0 and 15 but, uh, whatever it might be. I'm fine with that. Mm -hmm. what, what would, so would it go to 215 then? It would go to 215, yeah. yeah. And just, I mean, the, the 200 was a nice round number, but it wasn't that we were shooting for 200, you know, it's just it's a, a score out of 215. Well, I, I but so on process, I mean, the way we used the scorecard for the OPM was the, the, the subcommittee used that to give a score, but then once we shortlisted it, it kind of reset. Right? Is that how this will work mm -hmm. with the design committee? Where this will just be used to kind of create a short list, and then from that we will reset and evaluate all the short list on as kind of starting from zero. I don't know that it's starting from zero. It's still yeah. recognizing the importance of each of them as we evaluate them in a in a interview setting. So it's you know, for instance, the capacity of the the firm to be able to do the work will still be important as it's right. a zero to 15 versus something that's a zero to five will still weigh heavily as we deliberate after the interviews so i still think we're not going to score them we, <coughs> for the opms we just deliberated we had discussions and came to an agreement based on priorities which came off of the right right yeah. we still base it based but but we wouldn't be there's not actual score. To a score card. Yeah. So, That's so. not what we did for the OPM. And Only for the first round to go Yeah, this gets you to a short list. Right. Yeah. And then from there, you keep the yeah. same, you know, uh, like what's important, what's more important, less important. And then right. as they interview, you say, wow, they hit all the points that were important to us. Or, you know, they demonstrated more strength in this piece than this person did. So it just weighed heavily in how the favorite. You're understanding that conforms to accepted practice. Yeah. Using it that way to get them to the short, get them to the short list. Yes. Okay. Um, okay. There's a couple of different ways to do that. Um, no, I just want to make sure that we're in line. You know, it's not legal, but it's a procedural process that should be adhered to when you tell the designers mm -hmm. this is what's happening. Yeah. Looking at the score sheet, my like concern was um, there's no benchmarks. Like, so a lot of times they'll have, you know, five projects or more is worth more points. You know, Instead of saying kind of keeping it open ended, you know, experience with similar projects, it doesn't say, you know, five or more is highly that highly advantageous model. But I think based on the experience of I wasn't here for it, but I think it is more of a comparative evaluation yeah. than an absolute yeah. evaluation. Yeah. So I think this will give you the yeah. flexibility to do that. Yeah, because that's my point. I feel like we need to haggle less about point totals and specific line yeah. if it's just to get us to a short list. Yeah. It is, yeah. Yeah. just to get us to And just so everyone knows, the MSBA, as they evaluate proposals, they do it as a designer um, selection panel. They have their own criteria that, that they then shortlist. And what then happens is the town is able to put questions together for the three or four interviewees. <coughs> which tell them what how they need to focus their interview. So just as a procedural thing, if anyone's interested, if you think we missed anything in the RFS, that's an offer, that's how the MSBA does it. So then there might be four or five questions that are critical to hit in the interview that if you don't, then you're sort of docked, if you will, or asked in follow-up questions. Mm -hmm. So just procedurally, that's how the MSBA designer selection <coughs> panel operates. Yeah, and what we can do you is have to do it that way. You send out the interview schedule and you say, this is the schedule. You've got you know, 30 minutes of presentation, 15 minutes for uh, you know, follow-up questions. In your presentation, you should be sure to touch on these, mm -hmm. you know, the, the follow-up question. Yeah. That's sure. essentially how they do it, so which we, allows you to, to, to then, from the interviewees, who hit what topics and how hard and how, how well did they showcase it. Right off the bat. Uh, so we, so we said on this scorecard. Okay. I, I don't mean to. Yeah. 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 <laughs> okay, so uh, on on the are we are we good then? You, ready to, you got everything you need to to move to the next step, and we will now uh, be able to adhere to the schedule that we referenced earlier about posting. Correct. Yes. Okay. So I, I feel comfortable 
if the committee, I don't know if we're going to take an official vote that we move forward uh, or, or, or how the, the committee typically does that. Uh, why not? Why okay. Not? Yeah, uh, thank you. Uh, I would entertain uh, a, a motion to approve the format of the RFS as we amended it today. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Uh, Aye. Opposed? Thank you. Thank you. Um, with regard to the next item, the charter, okay, I think we're not, we don't have time to do that justice today. Uh, what I would ask you, it will be on the agenda for the next meeting, okay, to basically comment on what the committee members should be thinking about in anticipation of that discussion. So if everybody has in their packet, I can pull up on the screen, but we have guiding principles, project scope, total project cost, and project schedule. It's kind of four headers here, and that's really what we need the committee to think about and, and what are the guiding principles what do we want you know meeting an educational program we don't have to specify what that program is but we need it you know that that's one of the guiding principles that you know again you know net zero things like that that's the type of stuff we want ideally a project charter is a one-page document maybe it goes on the second page but it's, it's a one-page document high level not getting into the minutia at a high level but giving enough information that we can refer back to it at any time during the project and understand where it is. And I think what we had said at the beginning is, um, I typically do it in a bullet point fashion, and at the end of the project, if I can check all the bullets, we probably had a good project. And, you know, that, that's really, that, you know, that's kind of the, you know, the elevator speech on a chart. So if you can look at those items, projects, you know, cost and, and schedule are probably things that are just numbers that are going to be developed as, as we go forward. I wouldn't spend a lot of time on that, but it's the guiding principles and the scope. Uh, Guiding principles, like I said, are you know, net zero energy, and, you know, the educational program. Scope is things like, uh, do you want an auditorium or not an auditorium? You know, that, you know, that, that is something, again, that isn't typical with the MSBA, but most districts want. So I, what I would say is at a high level, particularly in the area that concerns you, okay, be thinking about a statement that says, this is what I would like to see happen in this project. Okay, and it, again, it's a high level. Okay, this is this is mm -hmm. this is what. When we're done, we look back and say we're we're proud of the fact we accomplished this. So that, that's the discussion we're, we're going to have. Okay. And I think what we'd like to try and do is literally maybe we have yeah. the, the notepad up there. Everybody's words get put on it, and then what we'll do is we'll try and combine it. You know, Charlie and Matt may have two things that are very similar, but you know, slightly different. But we may work on kind of, kind of combining it. And we can bring that back after the next at the next meeting. Mm -hmm. Say, hey, look, we took these forty, you know, items that we came up with in the meeting, and we reduced it down to ten. Did we miss something? Did right. we take something else that we shouldn't have? And, and, and it's, a, it's a living, you know, breathing document here. Good. Thank can we, can we compile those ahead of time? I mean, if people want to start sending stuff between now and the next meeting, we can come with you know the first ten already on the board. That's fine. Uh, but I, I think sometimes it's nice to get off the computer screen and actually get out the pad of paper. And, and I mean, the, the goal on these things is just not to inhibit people by saying, here's a list of 20 that we've already decided on. You know, you really want people to be free to, 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 to say what they really think in this discussion. Yeah. Um, so, um, good, um, Tim, go ahead. Let me ask, the, in, in September, this meeting we had a draft recommendation for the schedule, and then we had a discussion project charter. Should we just sort of be ignoring that? I mean, I think Hill took a step back and said, why don't we start fresh? So, yes. no, I'm right. speaking for you, but yeah, I think that's I would say we try to give you some, some input, and what we heard is that maybe we should start fresh and let everybody that is what we, you yeah. know, give their input rather. So that is what we're doing. Take a look at it. If it helps you, <laughs> use it. If it doesn't help you, don't use it. <laughs> All right. Sorry, there's a lot of things happening. Uh, <laughs> All right, uh, correspondence. We received... Uh, letter, right? We received a letter from uh, a group of citizens and they were inquiring related to uh, the profound use of wireless in the schools and the effect on the children and wanted to talk about, uh, uh, wanted us to discuss a, a direct network uh, uh, plan for the schools and we we responded to that, uh, uh, noted that we received it, and we indicated that we will revisit that letter when we, at the point of the project where we discuss safety and technology. Okay. Uh, 
Can I add something to that? And I'm sorry this fell off of our radar. We also received um, an email from Josh um, Virgil regarding comments about um, the RFS language, including the site as well as the building. And I went back and looked, but they were all valid points and thank you for, for sending that. Um, I do think that we've done a pretty good job saying project or facility or, and I think it's generally recognized that this is to include the site as well as the building, especially as it relates to sustainability and within the budget. Um, so those were some of the highlights of the correspondence there. So thank you, Josh, for that. Okay, that's the correspondence. I have a couple of announcements that Don alluded to one of them. There's some been some of, uh, some things to do with the subcommittees. We've added Charlie Parker to the sustainability subcommittee, okay? And also in the sustainability subcommittee, we have asked uh, Matt to take a lead role in terms of the sustainability subcommittee, and he's agreed to do that, and we're appreciative of that. Also, with regard to the design committee, um, uh, acknowledging the incredible role that Don has played in bringing that together as we start, uh, given her responsibilities as co-chair of the committee, uh, that's probably not sustainable. So we've asked Clark Court, 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 Court to take a uh, lead uh, in the leadership of the design committee. He's agreed to do that. That's not, Don will be a member of that group and undoubtedly have significant uh, impact on the direction of the committee. <laughs> but uh, this sort of spreads the leadership out a little bit and allows us to do that. The other thing, I uh, also in communications, uh, Pat and Heather have agreed to take the leadership of the communications committee in a, uh, in a, in a really exciting development there. A citizen uh, stepped forward, Chris Gagne, who has significant experience in terms of school communica communications. He actually has uh, founded and manages a firm that relates to uh, assisting schools in communication with, uh, uh, with the town, their towns and citizens. And he's agreed to volunteer with that committee and help us put together a strategy relating to our communications. Okay, and, uh, we hope to see a report on that in our next meeting. Okay, so that's, uh, that's just, some information, okay. Uh, and his, his name is Joel Gagne. Joel. Joel. Oh, thanks for Claire. Joel. That's Joel. Right. Yeah. Joel. Yeah. We, we were three minutes, so we have to change. That's right. <laughs> Great guy. And, and, and you know, if you sit in a meeting with him, you're excited about how we're going to communicate. Okay. And he reached out to us, which was amazing. <laughs> He's basically saying, "Can I help?" So we're very thankful for that. Yeah. So we'll, we'll get going in that regard. Uh, any other new business from the committee? Okay, and I'd like to open it up to comments or uh, questions from the, from the yeah. Um So going back to uh, the scorecard, they need to identify the RFS, themselves. They should uh, identify themselves for the yeah, you need my name Please, name. Brian. Thanks. Uh, Brian Folds, thirty-three Riverdale. Uh, so the the scorecard only about less than seven percent relates to the uh, past projects that have received uh, free certification. Our work. Uh, we put a lot into the RFS health house sustainability. Um, I would suggest that we have a scoring category in the personnel uh, and firm uh, capabilities that we say you know, score them on how capable they are of meeting this kind of uh, net zero building. Okay. Does that make sense? Um, I defer to Matt and oh, okay. and uh, <laughs> uh, so I, I it's a great point, Brian. And, and I guess that that was the reason for my question on how we use the scorecard. So okay. I, I think that um, the I, I, I have two thoughts to that. One is that we're just trying to get to a short list of yep. um, mm -hmm. of designers, and then we're gonna reevaluate from there. So this is just to kind of weed out the people who we who we know we don't want to talk uh, and, to. And and you think <coughs> do you think seven percent related to sustainability will get kind of 
person to do this kind of project? I, well, I do. So, so that's my second. My second point is I think that I I could like me as one member of this committee, and, and when I fill out the scorecard, I would read some of these with my hmm. sustainability lens on. So, like I you know, does the pride, and I don't you know provide detailed descriptions of. Uh, Demonstrate understanding of the project's particular needs and challenges. That doesn't necessarily say anything about sustainability. When I would score that, I would I would I would view that through that lens. Uh, it is how I it's how I approach it. I share your hesitancy. I, I agree and I think that this well I I agree with it in and and I hear your your responsive concern of, of yeah, but it's not, you know, we want to see it written. That's why we, we, we spent so much time kind of working on the sustainability goals. We all to make sure to try to get our right pushing for it. Well, right. Sure the scorecard also reflects those I, I, initiatives. Can I make a rebuttal right. just for the sake of being a designer? Um, I think that it, sustainability is super important. We've let the designer know in the RFS. Absolutely, we all want that. I think we don't get specifics. The number one reason we're here is to meet the educational Thank program, you. right? We don't say that specifically here, but that's in the back of our mind. So I think it's all integral to how we evaluate. So for example, the, um, design, <laughs> the designer's proposed team, so it doesn't just, it's not just the designer, their team, their consultant team, the people they're putting forward, demonstrates the capabilities to design a building that meets the objectives of the new Concord Middle School. Mm -hmm. In my mind, that is like evaluation of the team to not only meet it from a sustainability aspect, they may get higher points because they've demonstrated that, but also an educational um, you know, responsibility to help us. Do. So I think it is a balance, and I think unless we're gonna get specific about all of them, we should evaluate mm -hmm. it in that manner. Is that helpful? Yeah. That's, from, that's my perspective. That makes sense. Okay. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Jenna Miller, 1647 Main Street. I, when you're talking about uh, the ventilation system, uh, I, you talked about high efficiency, uh, but I did not hear the words heat recovery ventilation system. So, is, are you? Do you mean? Do you mean to include heat recovery in the ventilation system? I um, mean, it's just a. I, I don't Maybe think we method. want to mandate specific technologies yeah, in the RFS. It, in, in my definition of high efficiency, it would include energy or heat recovery. Um, but I, I haven't done a project it. in a long time without it, just right. as perspective. Like, that's I, I kind of the norm. That would be a given. But yeah. I think we want to shy away from saying we absolutely want to do this specific technology in the RFS. That's a great point, though, and that it's part of the. Mm -hmm. uh, Big picture, yeah. but thank you. Thank you. Okay. Any other comments? Okay, with that, I will entertain a motion to adjourn. All in favor? Uh, uh, aye. Aye. Thank you. Aye.